Hello and welcome to this note reading tutorial. I saw in many posts that there are big problems in reading the notes and in this video I show you another way, um, an additional way you can use to find the notes. Not in the traditional way, knowing this note is an A, this is an E and so on, but um, to, to see the context between the notes. That's really, really important. And uh, the first thing people struggle is to know where are these clefs, the one for the right hand and the one for the left hand. And uh, that's why I tell you a little story now. Um, two million years ago, no, we have a left hand and an index finger. And in piano playing, your index finger is finger number two. We take our left hand first because that hand is mostly neglected in piano playing. So that we start, we have the palm towards our face. So this stuff is for the left hand, this stuff is for the right hand. If you have your five fingers, one, two, three, four, five, you put it on each line on each finger. On the finger number two is on this line. And in the left hand, here starts the bass clef. Here, when I start here, and if you don't know how to draw it, simply think you uh, are writing two here, but this little part is not there. So, and there are two points here at this line where your index finger is in the left hand. In the right hand, it's the same thing, but because we are very creative persons, we turn our hand, wow, that's cool, and then we see that our index finger is on this second line here. And here starts the treble clef. Here. Go light the clock, go up and down. Okay, now the result is here. This is the G. The note is called G. In German, this, this uh, clef is called G clef. This um, clef in the left hand is called F clef. So, now we have two notes, here and here. And to remember how these notes are called, you only have to think that is the right hand. Right hand, and then we have the G here. And of course, here we have the left hand, and that's the F. That's the first thing you really have to know. Imagine we have here, in the middle of these two stuffs, one big note, a huge middle C. And because such a huge note is absolutely senseless, experts have divided this C into two C's. One C with a ledger for the right hand and one for the left hand. But that is exactly the same C. It's exactly the same key. But it's, once it's written for the, left, uh, the right hand and once for the left hand. When I draw again this big C, in the transition from the upper stuff to the lower stuff, there are not many notes. Let's say we start here, and then we come to this note on the line, in the space, and then comes already this C, then we go down here and here. So that in between these two stuffs there are only the D, the C and the B, and the rest is already written on the stuff. So there are not 100 notes between these two stuffs, only a D, a C and a B. Now in my opinion there are five notes you really, really, really have to know, and these are the five holy C's here. These two, for me, they are one C. 
That's the first C you have to know. Middle C for the right hand, for the left hand, exactly the same key. And then we go in the right hand two spaces down, there's a C, and in the left hand we go two spaces up. That's another C. This one is one octave higher, that is C4, that is C5, that is C3. And then two ledgers here, and there's another C, C6. Two ledgers here, we have C2. And these five C's, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one, you really have to know. And on the piano, it looks like that. A few words on the possibilities that notes are written in a score. The first possibility is it, it um, comes in a row here. So, something like that. There's no need to know all the notes. The, if you know where to start, you can go up, 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 up. Or the other way. It's also possible. Down, 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 down. That's the first possibility. The second possibility is, for example, um, let's say there are different notes only on the lines. That means on the keyboard, let's say we start here on E, you can, um, you can play every second key. So here you press the E, no F, G, no A, B. You can jump every to every second key on the keyboard. Of course, the same thing is when the notes are in the spaces, something like that. Jump over key, over jump a key, jump a key, jump a key. And every second key is played on the keyboard. And the third possibility is when the notes wildly jump around. and. Um, there's no context between. That is when our 5C comes into play. We have here middle C, this C5, C6, the same C, middle C, C3 and C2. Now, if we want to find this note, it's very easy. Go to C and we jump up two keys, because it's on the line. If we want to find this note, for example, we can do the same, but from this C, we can jump two keys down and come to this A. Or here, it's very easy, it's only one note upwards. So also here, for example, if we have a note that is very low, nobody knows how this note is called, it's in the nowhere land, but when you really know where these, this C, this C2 is, you can simply press the uh, thing of this C, jump one, or jump two keys up, and then you come to this E. Also here, for example, this note, you can use this C as a reference and jump down two keys to the A. That's the principle.